Imagine this. The church in Corinth, 2,000 years ago, is in a lot of trouble. Several factions had broken out within the church. Some people followed Paul, some people followed Peter, some Apollos, and some Jesus. The fighting had gotten so bad that they even sued each other in pagan courts. The Christians, who were supposed to be setting an example as good citizens and righteous people, were instead battling each other legally and letting unbelievers judge them. In writing his letter, Paul gets increasingly frustrated with them as he's writing, saying, how dare you go to law before the unrighteous instead of before the saints? But in the middle of all this correction, he blurts out out of nowhere, do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more the things of this life? Excuse me, what? Humans are going to judge angels? How in the world is that possible? And why is that something that's obvious to Paul, but not to us today? Well, we so often read the Bible after filtering it through the lenses of the church tradition and modern culture. But the Jews and Gentiles in Paul's time understood lots of the Bible that we just kind of gloss over now. In 1 Kings 22, the evil king Ahab of Israel wants to go take the city of Ramoth-Gilead, and he asks the king of Judah for help. They first ask for a word from God, just to make sure that it'll go all right. And even though Ahab hates him, he asks Micaiah for a prophecy. He hates him because Micaiah always prophesies bad things for Ahab. And this time is no different. He says, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab to march up and fall at Ramoth-Gilead? And one suggested this, and another that. Then a spirit came forward, stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. By what means? asked the Lord. And he replied, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouths of all his prophets. You will surely entice him and prevail, said the Lord. Go and do it. See, God had made the decision that Ahab needed to die, but he left the details of how that's going to happen to the spirits in heaven. They deliberate on an answer until one says he will go and be a lying word in Ahab's prophet's mouths. God then sends him to go, and in the following verses, that exact thing happens. So it seems spirits are able to help God in his judgments, but what about humans? Revelation is a book of visions from John about the end of the world. When Jesus is given power and authority over the world at the end, it says he is given the rod of iron. This symbolizes his ability to judge the entire world. But Jesus himself says in Revelation 2, The one who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give authority over the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. Isn't that amazing? That judgment authority given to Jesus is going to be shared with the people who believe in him and follow him. Why don't we learn this in church? Heaven isn't a bunch of people in white robes sitting on clouds and playing harps. It involves being a part of God's decision-making and ruling. And those angels Paul refers to are the angels that follow Satan. Hell was created for them, and humans will take part in judgment of them. The Bible is so much cooler when we understand the perspective of the people for whom it was originally written. See you next time.